Hey there everyone and welcome to another video where we are talking about web scraping using Python for absolute beginners. So again, just before you start watching this video, go ahead watch my previous video just before this. And I have talked a little bit about beginner friendly guide that how you should get started in uh, these web scraping and what are the caveat points and required and request and all these libraries and stuff. So it will make much more sense if you go ahead watch that previous video, otherwise this will sound all like jargon. Moving further, let's try to step up our little bit game onto the web scraping part and let me walk you through that how usually the web scraping is done. So let's just go back onto our browser because obviously just uh, showing up our code and uh, start writing with that doesn't really make sense. Make sure you analyze the thing for which you want to do scraping. Again, uh, this is my website. Go ahead, check that out. It's an amazing website. You can find about, about amazing courses on Python as well here, what we are using for the web scraping. Now let's just go ahead here. Now open up your any favorite uh, page on Wikipedia. We'll be doing some web scraping here and uh, not much intense like intense kind of work, basic stuff, okay? So this is the web page on machine learning on Wikipedia that I want to do uh, scraping. Maybe I want to find out all the links. Maybe I want to find out all the uh, headings here and all of that. But before I do that, first of all, I have to make my mind that what I really want to do. The next step is to analyze uh, the CSS of this. Like it might sound a little bit strange to you, but CSS is the most amazing thing that you should really look into a web page where you want to do that. Chances are high that whatever the web page you are analyzing, it's all CSS are exactly same in all of the other pages as well. So let's just go back here and let's just say we want to grab all the titles here. Uh, titles you can grab it. There are a couple of places like there is an overview here then the history, theory, approaches, application, all of that, you can grab it from here or you can grab it from here as well. These are like overview, then history and relations. So it can be uh, dependent on what kind of approach you are having. Let's just try it here first of all. So right click on here and click on inspect. By the way, I'm using Chrome browser, okay? So here we can see there is a class that says uh, to see text. So this is the class that I'm having for this. Uh, that's one thing that I'm getting from this and then let's move on to the next one which is history and relationship again I can see there is a class that says to C text really good point so it takes really good time good amount of time to analyze these things and you should really not ever hurry and right now I can see directly on to top of my cursor there's a span dot t text uh, then again this is all over there but you can also notice the subtopics are also there here so if I want to just grab, I have got my first thing out here directly out of the box that there is a class uh, in all of these list items which I can directly target. That can be one approach. Let's try to move on to another approach because I can give you a couple of assignments as well. Uh, that I can check out on this overview and you can see in this overview the class is MW headline and the ID is overview. And I'm pretty sure that ID is changing quite a lot because it's related to the name as well. But this MW headline looks like it's being used for all the headlines, not pretty sure. And there we go. You can see that this is also having an MW headline, MW dash headline, remember that. And ID is changing quite a lot. So ID is not at all useful. We are looking for some kind of consistency so that we can write a Python script and can loop through the, all of the web page to find out, find out all the things here, okay? And yes, approaches can be a little bit different. So I'll give you a couple of assignment as well. That would be really fun to do. So. So far I'm assuming, I've already checked it out honestly, uh, that these things like theory, all of them are having MW headline as their class. So we will be writing a Python script. The first job is to use request and send a web page request to this web page, store that as a request object. The step two will be to convert that object into beautiful soup object so that we can run our functions and everything. In the past we have learned that we can use uh, tags of HTML to get that particular information. In the last time, title was pretty okay. It just happens in one time in any web page. But this time we are looking to how somehow we can select the classes here. Again, your front end development skills are always gonna be helpful in here. So uh, in case, just to give you a quick idea here, when we are selecting the class, we can use dot class, just exactly how we select the CSS part uh, to target any class. If we had to select the ID, we use the pound sign here as well. It will make sense when I'll just walk you through with that. So let's just go here. First of all, I would like to copy this link uh, because we'll be using it. Now let's just go here. I want to fire up my Python 3. Again, uh, I will be working on the terminal. You can fire up your idle as well, whatever feels comfortable to you. Let me clear up the screens here as well so that we can have it. Okay, 
So things, what we have done in the past, exactly same. First of all, we're gonna create a res object. Oops, before that, we have to import some other things. So let's just import uh, BS4. And uh, this is beautiful soup 4 In the previous video, we talked about installation of that as well. It's pretty simple, pip install beautiful soup. And of course, read the documentation as well. We are also gonna be using requests. Again, requests for making a request, beautiful soup for doing the parsing. And we'll be using our LXML again, just like in the previous video. So I don't think so we need to import the LXML. I'm not sure. So let's just create again a request. So it is going to be simply a request dot get and then you simply mention what you really want to get in this case i want to get this web page pretty simple okay no big deal and once this is done i can obviously check the type of res and i know this is an object of type request this is not at all any good use i want to convert that into soup so i have to create a soup object you can name this anything it's just a variable and then uh there are too much spaces. Then I can simply say from the BS4, I want to use a method known as beautiful soup. So it is gonna be beautiful soup. There we go. Okay. As I mentioned in the previous video as well, it takes two parameters. First is your request, uh, that what we have got. And the second is what kind of tree structure you want to have, like HTML parser or LXML, just like that. In case you are not aware of this, if I type in just this res.txt, it will give me the entire web page here, which is of honestly no use for me. Okay, so what I can do is I can simply go ahead, I by the way, pressed control plus L to clean up my screen. I can simply say, uh, let's just create an object soup and we're gonna call this as BS4 dot beautiful soup and make sure you're aware about the case sensitivity here as well. So the first parameter is res.txt, so it requires all the web page to be parsed on here. And the second is what kind of tree structure you want to have. I'm gonna use LXML here. You can use HTML Beautify or HTML Parser or whatever you like. Now what now just has happened, the soup is now not at all anymore an object of request. It is an object from the class beautiful soup. Again, it's no harm to just verify that again. So you should always do that. There we go. Okay, so this looks pretty okay. Now we have learned about one method which is soup.select, we can use that. So we can simply say soup.select and we can pass on whatever the things we want to select, okay? In the first part of the video, we notice we can pass on the text like title, maybe div, not like that div, and then we can use like h1, h2, but in this case, we want to select the class here, okay? Now, if you have a class, you use a dot and then a class name. In this case, uh, mw-headline, okay. And if you want to use like, if it is not a class-based approach that you want to go, maybe there's an ID that you want to target there, then obviously it's really simple. You can use just a pound sign there or a hash sign, whatever you call that, and you can simply do that. Maybe there is some special h1 tag or span that you want to target. Obviously, you can mention that uh, maybe I want to target all the span that are into in just a uh, like next child of uh, the S2 tag. So I can simply say uh, use these kinds of CSS tactics that you already have uh, might be aware in the CSS class or in my front end development class. So this is all, all you can do as well. In this case, mine is just class. So I'm going to say dot and then mention this MW uh, dash headline. So as soon as I do this, uh, okay, we have got like a pretty lot of things. Okay, so uh, there we go. It has got a lot of things here, which is having uh, like too much of the data that I'm getting here. So we need to extract some of the information from this as well. And that can also be done. So uh, let's just say we can loop through the things to just kind of, because there are a lot of classes. This is a long web page, as you can see. So obviously there are tons of data that is coming up, so no big deal. We can loop through it, that would be better. So what I can say is, I can simply say for i in, and I can use like soup uh, dot select, if I can write the select, soup dot select, and then I can mention the things like dot mw dash head line, and I'll just close that and put a colon sign. So I'm looping through it, and I just want to say that please print uh, 
Now, here you want to approach like whatever you want to have a printing for that. In this case, I'll just say, you know what, I dot text because I just, I'm just interested in the text part. So I dot text and there we go. So I think this should do the work and there we go. We have got a lot of data here. And uh, notice here that as soon as I approach for the text, uh, rest of the information is gone because in the previous video we learned uh, that what this soup.select gives you an array of all the things that you are, are requesting. So you can loop through this object and all of that. So no big deal there. And now we have got this overview, type, history, relation, theory, approach, decision tree. It's, it's like too much of the things. Uh, so we have got all of this and this is like one approach of getting all the headers. Now, of course, as I told you, it depends on what you want to do further. Maybe you want to transfer that into a CSV file or a PDF file or just want to store an HTML page. It's totally dependent on you what you want to do. There are plenty of packages in Python that you can work on with. Okay, so it's time for assignment. Okay, so I hope many of you are following me and want to do an assignment as well. So right now, I did a job with using the class MW headline. Now, I want you to get an approach of a different one. I want you to take approach where you just get all the data using this content section. So you should analyze only this one, which is this guy. So overview, all of these, which is already having a span of two C text. It is easy, it's not that much hard if you have watched all of my two videos. So you need to grab all of this and just loop through it and all of that. I'm expecting all of your answers and your snippet code to be posted in the comment section or the discussion section below. It should not be really, really tough for all of you. And I hope you are enjoying these sessions on the web scraping as well. I know these are pretty fun, everybody loves it. So do notify me in the comment section as well that if you are enjoying these sessions or not. So. That's it for this video and I'll surely catch you up in the next one. Hey, don't forget to subscribe the channel as well. It's going pretty cool and I like it. Thank you.